everybody. I hope everyone is having a good day and enjoying the conference so far. My presentation is on improving code generation in Schema Salad. Let's start with a little bit about who I am. My name is Alex Coleman and I use she, her pronouns. I currently work at Curate part-time while also attending school at George Washington University in Washington, DC. I'm studying computer science and I'm set to graduate in May where I will join Curie full-time. I've been using CWL since November of 2020, although I've started developing CWL quite recently in November of 2022. So let's talk a little bit about validation with CWL. Say that you're writing a CWL workflow and your first step is supposed to run another workflow you created in your directory, which you called blub.cwl. You think everything's all fine and dandy. However, when you try to run it, you get an error. Turns out that blub.cwl doesn't actually exist. Luckily for you, there's tools that you can use for validating CWL objects. So here's an example of validation. This CWL workflow failed validation. Under steps, the step.1 object contained an undefined reference to blob.cwl, aka blob.cwl doesn't exist and the file is not valid. That previous validation was done with schema salad. Schema salad library is under the CWL organization. It's what's used by CWL tool to validate CWL documents according to CWL schema. So even if you haven't directly used schema salad before, you have probably used it if you've used CWL tool. Salad refers to the schema language for describing JSON or YAML structured link data documents. Salad schema describes rules for pre-processing, hyperlink checking, and structural validation, things we definitely care a lot about. So that leads to less errors when people are writing CWL code. It leads to better developer productivity and happier developers. Currently, there are two ways of validating schemas that Schema Salad uses. The out of the box default way recursively checks each key in the document for schema compliance. This way preserves line numbers and has more readable error messages, which is definitely good. However, it is unfortunately a lot slower, especially when you start looking at really large nested CWL workflows. The other way is the code gen way. It generates object-oriented code that creates object representation of the YAML or JSON object. This way is a lot faster, which definitely is a big benefit. However, it loses some information and has confusing error messages. So if we want to reap those benefits of the speed of the code gen way, we're going to need to address that loss of information and those confusing error messages. That's what this presentation is about and what I've been working on for the past couple months. Let's start by looking at the loss of information. Let's say you've developed a CWL workflow. When you originally have created it, you obviously know where everything is. You know that steps is on line 12 if you need to check that. And you're able to recreate this document and all that information and any comments that might be included as well. However, when this, ob when this workflow gets serialized, it gets turned into a workflow object. And that line information and that comment information is lost. So if another person were to take that object and try to get back the original document by deserializing it, they would be faced with this dictionary. It gives you all of the things that were in the original document, but it doesn't tell you where they're supposed to be. So if we take a look at steps, we know what it is and we know the attributes in it, but we don't know what line steps is supposed to be. Additionally, if there were any comments in this document, that would be totally gone. I would not be able to access that at all from the workflow object that the workflow is saved as. So the returned object before for the old code generator was returned as a dictionary. There's no line numbers and there's no comments. You don't quite get that document back. 
the changes I've been making to the code generator have it so that the workflow object is returned as a comment to map, aka ordered dictionary. Line numbers are preserved as well as comments and is able to adjust dynamically based on added attributes to the original document. So if we look at the screenshot below, this is the result of a workflow object being saved, trying to get that original back. It's returned as an ordered dictionary, which preserves that line information. So now, if we take a look at steps, we just need to add by one because of zero indexing, and we see that steps is at line 12 and that its first value is at line 13. So this is one below it. So now that line information is preserved and I'm able to rebuild the original document. Additionally, we can see ID was added, which describes the name of the workflow, and that has been dynamically added to be at the bottom of the object. So now it's at line 18. Now that we've talked about the fact that we've improved the loss of information, let's talk about error message. Error messages in the old code generator included a lot of irrelevant information. It didn't include line numbers at all, so you weren't able to know where the error occurred, and it actually did not catch all schematic errors. So as we saw with the first validation example, it is an error if that workflow is not defined in your directory, However, the old approach didn't catch that and would tell you that your file is wholly valid, even if that did not exist in your directory. It also has the tendency to be overly verbose, which can make it hard to get what information you actually need. I'm sure we've all had an experience where we are trying to debug a particularly confusing error message, and we spend hours scouring on the internet trying to figure out what's wrong. It's not a pleasant place to be at, and we want our error messages to make sense and be easy to debug. So the new error messages that I've been working on have irrelevant information removed. They do include line number and file name, so you're able to figure out where exactly there is an issue and fix it much quicker. It catches more schematic errors, such as a file not being found in your directory and hyperlink checking, and it's much more concise. Let's look at an example of the improved error messages. Here's a very basic CWL workflow. The class is set to be X workflow, and as we know, the valid classes are workflow, expression tool, or command line tool, not X workflow. However, it's possible maybe a new developer user didn't realize that, and they do think it's a valid workflow. They could continue to develop on this document for hours, not realizing that something's wrong right at the beginning and is going to cause an issue. If we look at the old code generator error message for this validation, we get a really confusing error message. We see that it tried command line tool, expression tool, workflow, an array of those together, but that's not very helpful if we don't know the issue is with the class. We might not know what this means. It doesn't tell us what the problem is and it doesn't tell us where the problem is. Someone could easily spend hours trying to fix it if this was their error message. So if we take a look at the new cogen error message, we see that it tells us the problem was in this particular CWL file. It was on line two, column one, it was a problem with the field class containing an undefined reference to X workflow. So now I know exactly where the error message is and I know what the problem is. So I know where I can go to fix it. In conclusion, if we want to get those speed benefits of code generation in Schema Salad and CWL tool, we have to ensure that we're giving our users and our developer community a good experience with helpful errors to fix their problems and more information about the original CWL object. So what's next? The PRs with these improvements are still under review, although if you want to check out the code generator, there is a fast parser flag already available for CWL version 1.1 and 1.2 documents in CWL tool. We could also make these improvements for other language code generators like TypeScript. Thank you.